live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. It's 2019, and guess what that means? It means the Turtle Power Podcast is back with a new episode. Because we've got some news that we need to cover, and I, uh, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it without. Well, I, I could do it without Darby because he's unfortunately not here. But I couldn't do it without my good buddy Alex. He's back on the hey. show. How are you, Alex? Oh, not bad, man. Not bad. Happy to be back after a, a long year and a half hiatus. But now my child can fend for herself, so I'm, I'm back. <laughs> She's just out there with the dog, and just you know, they're they're just they're just you know wrestling around. It's, it's all good. I just, I just let them you know handle it. Yeah, yeah, very well, good. The uh, our our youngest cat Jasper, he he pretty much just uh, is <laughs> is the uh, the wrestling buddy for for my daughter now. She just she just <laughs> it's really bad. She like. Frog star, <laughs> five star, frog star splash. This jumps on him. It's it's terrible. It's like <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eva Eva has a tendency of uh, of spearing everyone. Ah, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, she get she got that from me because I started doing it to her at a very young age to assert my dominance, and now <laughs> she does it to Juliet. The good thing about Juliet. Um, for those of for those of you who don't know my dog, which is basically everyone but <laughs> us, um, she she uh, she wasn't the nicest dog of all time. Um, but it's kind of crazy how your animals change and adapt to children, um, especially when you're just not sure. And now she's just Eva just she spears Juliet to assert her dominance. I'm I'm, I'm assuming, um, and Juliet just takes it like. Doesn't care. Yeah, doesn't care less about what's going on around her, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it, it, and well, I mean, Juliet's a, a, a stocky uh, <laughs> canine, if you will. Yeah, it's, you don't have to really, you know. Are you fat shaming my dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, she's, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's, she's a, a she's a full figured, muscular, you know. She's a, she's, she's yeah. a full figured bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Yeah. So yeah, I mean you know you'd have to uh, really so it's something to strive for, something that she can you know uh, work up to 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 really be able to uh, to knock her on her butt. So you know, so yeah, just she can work at. Jasper is a pushover. He just he just goes down like a sack of potatoes. He, he I feel just, like I feel like Jasper would just run for his life. He doesn't. That's the problem. <laughs> he just <laughs> he just lays down and she just so she Olivia's just frog splash. Yeah, Jasper. Olivia's the smart one. She she. She runs like crazy, but Jasper just lays down, and then, <laughs> and then our daughter Ellen just just jumps off the couch and frog splashes on top of him, and then he squeaks because he so, can't breathe. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, how much does how much how much does she weigh now? Uh, what is she like? Twenty five pounds, something like that. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah. So yeah, my child is just chunky. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. So right, Elwin's always been long and skinny. Like, okay, I mean, it, so for yeah. reference, because people have no idea what we're talking about. How old is Elwin? Uh, she's almost two years old. She's almost really. She's almost two years old. Almost two. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um, and she's twenty-two pounds. You said twenty-five. Twenty-five pounds. Eva is. Uh, she turned a year in October, uh, so she's just under about a year and a half old. 
and she's 35, <laughs> 35 pounds. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if, if she were to do that to Jasper, <laughs> <laughs> Jasper might not be here. Anymore. Jasper. Yeah. He wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Eva's a better eater than Ellen. Ellen's not a very good eater. Like, wait, oh. she, the only thing she likes is pizza. <laughs> That's not the only thing she likes. She, she, my wife is here in the room joining us as a live studio audience today, so she's laughing over there. Um, we had we had some Papa John's tonight, so she gets so excited when I bring the pizza home. She gets she gets so excited. She just runs up and she like starts hulking up. And then <laughs> she says, let me tell you something, brother. No, she doesn't say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, yeah, she loves pizza. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, you know, we try not to <laughs> feed our daughter pizza every night. Just, just pizza. Yeah. <laughs> just pizza. That's it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, now, we, we got lucky with, uh, with Eva because she, uh, she eats a little bit of everything. Uh, she's she'll try anything, anything. No, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So, including dog food, which has already happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, so. that's it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, well uh, so we had the holiday. We had yeah. the holiday holiday break. Did you uh, did you enjoy your your Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was it was a little different because usually I travel for Christmas and I didn't travel this year for the first year, the first t- first time in like fourteen years. Mm, I didn't, I didn't yeah. leave Gainesville. Yeah. Um. So that's 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 weird. It's it was it's still weird uh, to me because it's just a change of pace. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it was uh it was good. It was good. Um, it was Eva's first like Christmas that matters because she was what like two months old when right first Christmas that doesn't matter so um it was fun to watch her just open and just rip stuff like (laughs) just apart and then just like look at it enjoy it for two seconds put it down and then open another present (laughs) and then forget about it forever (laughs) Ellen was the same way yep yep (laughs) oh that's so funny well we spent a little bit of a Christmas moment together down in uh, Disney Springs we uh we did the Christmas tree trail thing there yeah, that was that was that was terrible. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of people. <laughs> the, okay, the company was great, <laughs> but, but dude, man, Disney Disney in December is is just the worst thing in the world, and it doesn't matter what part of Disney. Yeah, it's, it's a madhouse. Just, it's crazy. We, I mean, it's a trail full of Christmas trees, and you'd think they were giving them away because <laughs> every single person in their entire family of 40 was there taking pictures with Christmas trees that had basic Hallmark ornaments on there, practically. <laughs> like, this yeah. is stupid. I just want to enjoy the smell of the Christmas trees. Like, I just wanted to go walk through Christmas trees. Yeah. No. <laughs> it was it was a it was a uh, a shuffle uh, past some christmas trees we we did we get any pictures with any of the christmas trees no we just wanted to get the i don't think we did as no. fast as possible like i wanted to get to, i wanted to get out of there as fast as i possibly it was could. it was it was uh quite quite busy yeah it was it was it was not enjoyable, but I mean everything else was enjoyable. Like we went to the Earl. Yes, yeah, so we did enjoy our Earl Earl of Sandwich. If if any if anyone listening doesn't know what Earl of Sandwich is, it's this this little uh, little sandwich shop in in Disney Springs, and there's one in Tampa, and mm-hmm. I think there's a couple more around the country. There's not that many though, and they make uh, they make these fantastic sandwiches. And well, because. Uh, because history has that the Earl of Sandwich ah, yes. was yes. the, the creator of the first sandwich. Right. That's right. So these are OG sandwiches. Yep. And uh, and they're pretty cheap. <laughs> I mean, for Disney, it's, it's really cheap. Um, but they're, they're very good. And uh, somehow we found a table because it was packed as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a good little night there. And, yeah. Uh, um, Eva was great. She 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 was she she was just chilling. We were an hour and a half late as no, uh, well, as okay. it as it happens. It's okay. Anna, uh, we were, we were chillaxing. Yeah, <laughs> we we were chillaxing by the water. So that was good. That was good. Um, did you get any uh, any uh, Ninja Turtle uh, 
uh, stuff. Did you or Ava get any uh, Eva? I said Eva. Eva. Yeah, my, yeah, my daughter's name is Eva. It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's it's not a mission. Look, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and do I, I? I almost regret my daughter's name. Oh, it's, it's E V A. Yeah, and people call it Ava all the time in Spanish. Like Eva is, I guess, how you pronounce it. But mm. you're you're in, white English, English, in my Anglo-Saxon. So uh, you're. You, I have no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's Eva. It's it's Eva, and um, her middle total. name. Her, her middle name is. Is it um, Mar- it's May. Yeah, Eva May. Yeah. I, see, I always yeah. want to say Eva Marie because there was a wrestler, Eva Marie, who's not a wrestler anymore. But that's how I remember it. Yeah, um, we we went see Eva and Ava. So Eva is kind of like we actually named it after named it. My daughter named her. <laughs> <laughs> well, at so, the time, it wasn't it. You didn't know. That's true. So. Um, so the movie Wally has Eve. Right? Yes. So she, um, but Wally says Eve, and then there's like a uh almost at the end. <laughs> it's so true. Eve. Eve. For, for my for almost my entire existence, uh, well, almost the entire movie's existence, I thought he was saying Eva. So I named her after Eva from the movie. I like it. Yeah. Lo and behold, it's <laughs> Eve. <laughs> it's okay. But it's all right. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, my my daughter's a lie. <laughs> oh, oh, it's okay. It's it's yeah. fine. Like it's still a good name. So it's it. You know, it's it's not like it's yeah. uh, it's not like. Uh, so funny fact that uh, we just found out uh, doing all of the paperwork for Elowen that my middle name is misspelled on my birth certificate. So <laughs> but that's a thing. So at least you didn't screw <laughs> screw it up like that. <laughs> Or she's got to live with that for the rest of her life. No, she's at yeah. least her name is still a name. The way my yeah. name is spelled on, on my birth certificate, my middle name, is not a name. It's it's just, it's just not a name. It's not a real name at all. <laughs> so, oh um, man. Um, but as far as turtle things, you know, I for the first year ever, because it was such a crazy Christmas. I don't think I actually got any turtle related things. Strangely enough, uh, I think I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Um, it, it's very weird. Yeah. Uh, hmm. The only thing that's that I uh, kind of um, basically used some of my um, – it's not really Christmas. It was more of like a Christmas birthday kind of deal but because um, my, my birthday is so close to Christmas. But mm-hmm. I uh, I used some of, uh, some of our uh, – some of the birthday money for um, the NECA turtles, uh, okay. the uh, yeah. yeah, the movie ones that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, because those are coming out to GameStop, so I had ordered those way back around my birthday. So when they first uh, went on for pre-order, so they're finally shipping in February next month. So um, did you get the set or did you? What'd yeah, you get? yeah, I got the yeah. the set, um, and uh, the set was at the time there wasn't even a set to order. You had to order them separately, but uh, um, they na- they now have a set. You can just get all four together. So that's that's uh, that's what uh, I went and changed the order. So I got the set. So uh, yeah, so that'll be uh, adorning my uh, my cubicle. <laughs> Hopefully, someday I can return to it. Um, oh yeah, government shut down. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. NASA's uh, NASA's uh, part of the shutdown. So yep. Uh, but someday, someday I'll get back there. But uh, all satellites are going to come crashing to Earth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not how that works. But you not, know, not, uh, hopefully, I feel like hopefully I feel not. like this, the, the, that could be like the the government sh- shut down is like a premise. It's like the beginning of a really bad post apocalyptic movie. Mm. You it know? Could, yeah, that's true. It could be. 
Yeah. There, there are people that do still have to work, NASA employees that still have to work, and they're basically the ones that are there for, like, uh, you know, if they have some sort of safety concern. Um, so yeah. we're getting ready to launch humans again, uh, astronauts from uh, from the Cape here. So yeah. um, there's a few uh, engineers. It's, like, only, like, 5% of the workforce, that is, uh, which two of them are <laughs> the two guys that sit next to me. Um, uh, so they're having to work, and they're still not getting paid. But they're still having to work. <laughs> so, um, poor guys. But, good uh, yeah, good times. But anyway, let's, uh, let's start talking about that, and let's talk about some news. The authorities won't talk to us, but they might talk to a TV news reporter. How do I look? Uh, great. General, April O'Neil, Channel 9 News. Uh, Channel 6 News. So, what's with the getup? You a news reporter? <laughs> In another lifetime, maybe. This is April O'Neil, Channel 6 News. April O'Neil, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This is April O'Neil, Channel 3 News. I'm not doing it. So, <laughs> man, it's been so long. I, had, <laughs> I forgot about the... We got the news. Yeah. Yep. It, I'll do yeah. it for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but we, we wanted to... Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of lower level news that has occurred since the last time we've uh, put out a show but um there's a, a few topics that we wanted to highlight uh this one and i i especially wanted to highlight this one because it's actually going to be happening again on march 22nd but the the rochester americans which is a minor league hockey team Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh they um they played against the Cleveland Monsters and this was uh this was actually pretty cool because the two teams dressed up as uh both Rise of the TMNT and Foot Soldiers and um or the foot I see we'll talk about the Rise of the TMNT later but I haven't been really keeping up with the the, uh, the show but anyway I haven't even bothered yeah. are you getting yeah. like yeah so the the Cleveland Monsters ended up winning. Uh, they or no, sorry, the the Rochester Americans won this first game. Um, they were actually dressed as the Foot, um, yep. and the Cleveland Monsters were the Turtles. They got so the Turtles got beat four um, zero. So, uh, uh, but we've got some some game as always. Uh, check out the show notes for the links. Um, but we've got some, uh, recap video showing the, the teams dressed up. And, and like I said, March 22nd, if you're in the, the Rochester, uh, area, um, check out, uh, check out the, uh, the game there. Um, the, it's weird. They, they go, they're the, the Rochester Americans, but they go by the Amerks. Why not? Cause, cause why not? Amerks.com. That's the... Why not? But I do dig the uh, the jerseys, though. I think they look pretty sweet. Yeah, they do. Um, I just are they all like the turtle ones? Are they all, are they all raf, raf red? Or... I think so. I think they're yeah. all raf red, uh, just with their different numbers on them. I think that's all. Yeah, that could be better because it could not be raf red, <laughs> or or I mean, you can you can I don't know. I I just feel like that's that's pretty basic. But I mean, of course. I'd rather see blue, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, I think overall, like I would actually own it though. I would, I would actually purchase it and own it if they were, if they were, for, are they for sale? I don't think they are. Um, I don't think that these ones are for sale. I think they have in the past mm-hmm. uh, done things where they'll like uh, donate the, uh, or they'll have like a, um, they'll donate them to, um, have like say like a, an auction um so that they'll raise money for some sort of something um but i think that that's just locally there at the game so right um so yeah i don't think you can like anybody could just buy these off uh, the internet or anything so hmm. yeah all right what's well, next what's next I don't, I, that's enough jersey talk it's enough hockey talk that's more <laughs> hockey talk than espn has ever had <laughs> that's true definitely more minor league hockey talk uh, <laughs> but uh i don't know what do you think about this next one uh the star signs yeah the TMT? The, 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 that's the, that where we're at yeah okay so <laughs> um so what's interesting about this I, I, I don't know, man. I, 
<laughs> I've never sat there and tried to figure out, is Leo an Aquarius? <laughs> is Raph an Aries? And so on and so forth. I, I just don't know how this this conversation, was this, a, was this, was this an interview that happened? Yeah, or? so... Sci-Fi Wire, um, so Sci-Fi.com, like the the channel, Sci-Fi channel, they've been yeah, they've been doing a lot of blogging yeah. lately um, over the last probably say year, uh, just doing a lot of random blog articles, and uh, um, you know some of the stuff's pretty, you know they'll they'll break some news on their on their site, but uh, sometimes it's kind of more fluff pieces like what this is, which is basically the star signs of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and basically trying to figure out. Which zodiac, which sign of the zodiac that each turtle is, um, purely based on their um, their characteristics. So can I can, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes. So who who is Claire and who is Sarah? Exactly. Are they? <laughs> do we know who they are? They are. Uh, f- are they're are they writers for sci-fi? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So do they need to put as if they were interviewing each other? I, I don't understand why not just write – if you're going to do this, just write a piece about each individual turtle, not not just write your discussion. I think that's the laziest writing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's just like let's just write down what we're talking about as we're talking about it. <laughs> it's so yeah. stupid. So basically they just turned the recorder on and they just talked for um, 10 minutes and then they just transcribed what they're – like, Claire – Sarah, as if we're we're supposed to know who the fuck they are. <laughs> I think, <laughs> um, Experts. I, look, okay, so I'm 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 Cuban, and we we go a lot by uh, there's a lot of zodiac and like mystic arts kind. Of, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> They're like mystic arts in my culture. Um, Is there really? Clearly. Yeah, well, like zodiacs are huge in in in, in my culture as well as um, you know uh, 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 Santeria, but that's a whole other thing. Okay. Um, you know, chopping chicken head, chicken heads off yeah, and all oh, that sure. stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, and uh, by the way, it's a real thing. I'm not condoning it, but if you drive down Miami, anywhere in Miami, almost you'll find random chickens like dead on the side of the road and other animals. It's crazy, but um, it's good to know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that I completely agree with some of these um, and and their 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 analysis of of these zodiac signs. I feel like they just they they literally picked up a newspaper um, if they even know what that is, or just went to a random zodiac site. And every single flipping zodiac site has a different description of what each one is supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, well, that's why I've never been into them. But let's run down the list right quick. So right. they got Leonardo as Aquarius, Raphael. <laughs> Raphael is Aries. That makes sense. <laughs> Michelangelo is Taurus. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Donatello is Pisces. 100%. <laughs> Splinter is Virgo. Yes, I agree. And also, I'm a Virgo, so I'm a little biased there. Okay, that's good. Shredder is Gemini. Absolutely wrong. He's a Scorpio. Ah, there you go. I agree. There's no Scorpio representation here. Uh, yeah, April- I'm also making this shit up because that's really what it is anyway. April um, O'Neil is Libra. Okay, yeah, why not? Uh, I I almost saw her more as uh, as as a Pisces, but um, Pisces yeah, in here we'll either, go, yeah, 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 we'll go Libra. Why not? And uh, Casey as a Sagittarius. Um, I actually think that one is right on. Why are we even talking about that? I don't even want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> this is stupid. This is the, literally this is the dumbest yeah, thing I, I've ever talked about. Yeah. None of it makes sense. You can't. None of it is proven. It's yeah. it's it's like okay, you know, like what's your favorite color? That's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this one I, I I more just wanted to include on here just just to, so we can kind of crap on it, but that's okay. Oh, okay. They're, they're the contributors. If you want to tweet at Sarah Century and Claire McBride, it's at Sarah Century S A R A C E N T U R Y and Claire McBride at Omni Omnivore Omnivore Omni, Omni, Real. Yeah. O M N I V O R E A L. I'm sure she was being trying to be very, very clever. Um, <laughs> and that's that. Yeah. I think we can move on. Please, let's just please let's move, move on. on. Uh, Want to do a couple quick uh, Kevin Eastman updates. Um, uh, really, uh, just kind of more um, for the, uh, the Kevin Eastman uh, website. 
Um, there's some really cool vintage interviews that uh, he's added to the website. Um, I don't know if he's added them or um, or if Courtney added them, but uh, uh, there's a really cool one called Raphael, the interview from 1985. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one call, um, from uh, a magazine called Comics Interview, number 27. This yep. is also from 1985. Um, both of these have some really fantastic early early, early TMNT artwork. Um, and then uh, the uh, Team Eastman 2019 convention schedule has been released as well. So um, if uh, unfortunately nothing in Florida for us, but uh, uh, take a look at the uh, website and see if uh, the Eastmans are coming to your town. You know, um, I find it interesting that Florida with the, the climate and the um, – the just i mean we have large cities we have um big metro areas like miami tampa jacksonville and orlando primarily and orlando being super transient where you would think that a lot of these convection can uh conventions and 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 cons would make their way over here yeah but they don't yeah and it just it was my mind. Yeah. It, it, likewise, for Orlando being so central in the state, and mm-hmm. ha- I mean, you can get here, you know, uh, and less than two hour less less than two hours from Jacksonville, from Tampa, from Gainesville, you know, from uh, probably uh, what Miami's probably three. Hours. It's like a three and a half yeah. hour drive, probably. So, right. So. Um, with all that being said, like there's been some big stuff in Orlando. Obviously, Star Wars celebrations have been here several times. Yeah. Um, but just gen- like a general Orlando convention, there's like 14 of them, and they're all tiny. And yeah, like it's. We I guess MegaCon I guess is kind of like the biggest one, but it's it's still it's not that big of a convention. So yeah, it, yeah, Orlando's got to step its game up. The whole state of Florida's got to step its game up for conventions. So I concur. Yeah. Uh, All right. So with that, let's get on to some gaming news. That doesn't come very often. Uh, Well, it's not uh, it's not necessarily video games. Uh, it is it is games though. Um, did want to include one um, article here over at comicbook.com. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's an article about uh, basically um, what could be in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. Um, this this is a uh, from the company Nicalis N I C A L I S. Yep. Um, so uh, this is basically what they did was they tweeted out a uh, a picture that says, if we developed a TMNT game, it'd look like this. And very um, kind of sprite-y, um, like 2D. pop figure-ish. Yeah, pop figure, um, kind of dimensions, kind of bigger head, but uh, 8-bit uh, style. So, uh Sure, looks fun. Um, it looks, look, but it looks like a mobile game. It looks like it does look like a mobile game. That's true. Or, or if if it weren't a mobile game, just like a, again, it's going to be like a hour and a half, two hour beat 'em up, which is still fun. It's yeah. still fun. I mean, like that's a cool, fun sit down with a, with a buddy. Like each one of you grab a controller. Well, the Raw Thrills uh, arcade game. That was. Yeah. I mean, that's a really fun game. But yep. you know, it's. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It's it is a certain type of game that is good for you know an experience, and then when it's done, it's done. And actually, here's, real close. Look, look, here's the thing. Look, it, it, I don't understand. I still have yet to understand why the concept of a of a, of a TMNT game is so difficult. It's almost like they're torn between doing something new and daring. And trying to stay true to its predecessors, like the 2D platformers or uh, the, just side-scrollers in general. It's, they don't know what to do. And 
It's not that difficult. I, I maybe they don't have the 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 proper the proper financial backing to do it. I don't know, but I feel like look at the Spider Man model. Yeah, look at the Batman model. Look at the Batman model, and, and, and I mean, the, obviously the Batman model is probably the more doable out of the two because it's probably going to be more financially uh you, they're going to be more financially capable to do a Batman model as opposed to a Spider-Man model. I think a Spider-Man style game that kind of sandbox game is going to cost significantly more money to not only create but upkeep as opposed to a Batman where it's just kind of like a one and done. Like the Arkham series is just like one and done. Um like there's not much DLC that you're wait- really waiting on. Um so I mean you could do a Batman model it's incredibly successful. It's a popular series. People enjoy it. The mechanics, the fighting mechanics, they love, which they kind of, kind of got a little bit in. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Was it um, Out of the Shadows? Was that was that the name of the game on PS4? Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 It yeah. was the uh, <laughs> the original Out of the Shadows. Yeah, the ori- <laughs> original Out of the Shadows. It it had so much potential. Yeah. And they showed the potential. They were the, the the graphics were getting there, but the game was two hours long. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it was a very short game. Um, it had uh, issues with the launch, where it was only on certain platforms at the time, um, and uh, there were some technical issues during the launch as well. So um, it had again, it had a lot of potential. Um, Think maybe just the developer maybe I don't know didn't have uh, the right resources there you know whatever the situation that had occurred um, yeah it was it was uh, I guess you know Turtles franchise does not have a, a a good recent history when it comes to video games right Let's recent history uh, I just feel like the 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 turtle universe i mean you just you can pick whatever whichever you'd like there's so many variations but it's so there's so much depth there's so many characters there's so many storylines to to choose from you literally have hundreds of stories already written for you and you can obviously create your own but you have so much to build off of already why not take what so many people have already done for you and obviously tweaks here and there but you have all the. It's not like you have to create new characters, and you can like you. But you already have a a, a, a wonderful like l- lineup, like already created for you, where all you have to do is develop them. Right. Yep. I don't know. Maybe someday. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe someday. Uh, Probably one... not. <laughs> <laughs> um, one area where the uh, turtles in gaming has uh, been thriving is in the uh, in the gaming, like the board gaming uh, realm. Uh, there was the IDW uh, games um, uh, TMNT board game that came out. Uh, gosh, was it twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen? Um, 2017, I think 2017. Yeah. And, um, it was a Kickstarter and it was, it went gangbusters. Um, there's now not one, but two sequels, uh, that are being kickstarted right now. And, uh, they've already gone way past their goal. So these are definitely getting uh, made. Um, so it's, it's going to be two games. It's, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Change is Constant and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles City Fall. So obviously based on the IDW, uh, series, um, and they're, get this, they're $125 each or $250 for both. And the, the, their goal was $200,000. When I checked, um, I think this was yesterday. Mm-hmm. It was at three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars they had already raised with now like three weeks still to go. So, um, yeah, th- these things are just selling like hotcakes. So. Um, so, you know, if you want one, uh, definitely go and check out uh, their estimated delivery is going to be in October of twenty nineteen. So you'll have to wait a little while for the delivery, but um, uh, definitely. uh um, grab one if you if you uh, are interested. You know we've talked in the past um, on this show. You know, unfortunately, n- none of us are really uh, 
in the 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 big you know board gaming sphere um no i got i mean i can i can play monopoly or <laughs> cheesy. Yeah. i just I, I just never got into it like even even like video games that are based on board games i just can't do like i remember um was it Final Fantasy Tactics? I think it was mm. where it's kind of set up very similar to like a board game like this and old rare tactics and, um, and games like that, or just like big box games like Monopoly. I like, I just, or Mario party. I don't find joy in that, but that's just me. But this is, this, it's a huge community. Like I, I, I had no idea how vast this community was, but clearly it's big, when they're raising three hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars for a fucking board game, but they can't raise three hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars for a decent video game, and it's still pissing me off that we can't get a damn decent game. On you know what? I'm I'm off my soapbox. I'm 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 done with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there is Injustice Two, which has the uh, if you get the Legendary Edition, it comes with the the turtles. So how dare you? How dare you? It's it's good. I mean, it's not a it's not a turtle I know, game. It's, it's not. they're they're they have Jason. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's I, it's it's just a it's just you know their version of Marvel versus Capcom, and it's not sure, as good. Sure. <laughs> Uh, one extra game that we wanted to mention too is a it's a card game. It's called uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ninja Pizza Party, and um, let's see, this is going to be coming out in March 2019 for twenty dollars, so a little cheaper. Um, but it's basically it's designed for two to six players uh, for fans of all ages. Um, so there you go, you guys can all play at the house there. Uh, it says all ages, so Eva's Eva's good to go. Ellen's good to go. Um, Not so much. I gave her um, uh, some T, uh, TMNT playing cards. Um, they're big, the, the really big ones um, that you get like the dollar store. Like I got them like years ago. And uh, she ate them, so uh, <laughs> we're not there yet. Uh, yeah. We, we, uh, we sh- Elowen plays with two Ninja Turtles uh, figures right now. They're both like vinyls. And so they don't really move, and she there's not she's not gonna choke on any little parts. <laughs> any so, pieces, yeah. yeah. So um, it's a Donnie and a Raph. There you go. There for her. So, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, we've got a link in the uh, show notes uh, about this uh, about this game as well. So uh, apparently it's it's made by um, uh, this this guy Prospero Hall, I guess. Uh, he's designed some other card games for some other, uh, uh, I guess Harry Potter. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, check that out. And, uh, that's going to be it for gaming news. Let's get into TV news. All right, so the first bit of TV news um, is is actually featuring the 87 turtle. So if you haven't seen it already, we're not going to talk much about it, but the the original 87 cast being utilized for that Honda commercial. I actually never saw it on TV. Me neither. Uh, I saw the the $6 million man one. They did the, you know, it's the mm-hmm. same commercial just with, the, you know, the Steve Austin um action figure i saw right. that one like seven times but <laughs> i never saw the ninja turtles one uh so um but uh we got it on the, the youtube link here so uh you can check that out it's, it's really cool to see that they brought the entire original voice cast back for that so and and the the uh the original playmates toys as well so um second thing i wanted to mention was uh an article about the uh, composer for the um, rise of the TMNT. Uh, his name's Matt Mahaffey. I think yeah, I pronounced we'll that. that right. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, apparently he's he's kind of a big deal in Nashville. So um, he's a producer and a, and a performer. Um, and so uh, um, we've got a nice uh, little article uh, about him. And so you can kind of learn about his past and his uh, dealings with the TMNT. Um, 
Once again, Nickelodeon going the route of DVDs. Not I was going to say. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Blue Come um, on. For, for Rise of the TMNT. So the first one's going to be debuting March 12th, 2019. So that's that's still happening. I get it. I understand it's cheaper, but it's not like you're you're. Oh man, why? So I I just I we one of the things we got uh, with our Amazon cards are like you know that's one thing we get from you know from family members are like oh what do you get one for Christmas it's just Amazon just give us Amazon gift cards mm-hmm. whatever that's fine we'll use them first off. So one of the cards I used. Um, was for I got both the original Avatar and uh, Legend of Korra series, both series, right on Blu-ray, and uh, so obviously it's been done. <laughs> Nickelodeon does know how to make Blu-rays for TV shows, so this is a thing they can do. They just have to do it. Um, but man, yeah, I, you know, maybe someday we'll see. Um, I mean that whole the whole 2012 series is just sitting there waiting to be released. So the the entire 20 or 2003 series, 10, 10 three series still yeah. hasn't. It's just, I mean, it's we have DVDs to be yeah. But. yeah, yeah. I mean, they were all released on DVDs at different points, which are not right. really available anymore. And and so right. yeah. So so I mean, I just want to make it clear like i i I was trying to just kind of research just some really basic stuff i was trying to find like different blu-ray series that they may have had or have created um you know rocket power the show rocket power you remember that show no okay so it was just a bunch of like uh you know preteens that did all these extreme sports there were exports um during the like the the exports craze like the tony hawk days and stuff like that um so i used to watch the show back in the day it, it, i think it had like a two or three series run it wasn't like a super popular show but it it has a it has a blu-ray set um from nickelodeon and um I was trying to like see, okay, like I was like, hmm, I, I bet you like maybe SpongeBob because SpongeBob, it being so popular, has. I have not been able to, as outside of the SpongeBob movies, find like SpongeBob season Blu rays. So they're very, very specific in particular about who gets a Blu ray and who doesn't. And I don't get it. You'd think it'd be pretty much standard all across the board. Yeah. Um, but it's. It's not, and it's just the most bizarre thing. Like, I think, I think Hey Arnold has a Blu-ray series too, but all their crappy freaking movies, okay? They're shit movies. <laughs> like, I'm looking at them right now. A Fairly Odd Summer, A Fairly Odd Movie, A Fairly Odd Christmas. I haven't watched not one of them because who in the fuck would? <laughs> have, they're Blu-rays. They have Blu-rays. You're sp- you're wasting money on Blu-rays on that shit, but you can't waste like spend money yeah. on a Blu-ray on a series on an ongoing series that you have that's insanely popular. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, on one of the biggest franchises in in the history of franchises. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let's think. I mean, think about think about this cartoon series. Think about the Turtles franchise and how it's a generational thing, and it has literally been in the '80s. In the '90s, in the 2000s, and now in the 2010s, yep. and heading into the 2020s, like it's it it it, it, it just blows my mind, dude. Yep. Blows my mind. Yeah. So until then, um, we actually have uh, Hulu right now. So um, mm-hmm. the 2012 series is on there. So that's uh, that's well, that's a great series, yeah. and that that series ended like the ending was just amazing. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, Nickelodeon and TMNT, uh, mm. rise of the TMNT, the ongoing, uh, current animated series, uh, was recently nominated for three Annie Awards. Uh, of course, TMNT is no, uh, stranger to the Annie Awards. Um, the 2012 series was nominated several years for various, uh, Annie Awards. 
Um, the new series uh, was nominated for, for three of them uh, in the, let's see, Best Animated Television Broadcast Production for Children. Uh, they are in the Animated Effects in an Animated Television Broadcast Production. Mm-hmm. And lastly, the storyboarding in an animated television broadcast production. So, so let's talk about the competition, yeah. right? Let's. It, the competition wasn't that great either. Um, I'm not trying to take anything away from the guys that work on the show because I think here it's not it's not my it's not my TMNT obviously, and it's not my preferred. TMNT. That's not to say it's bad, right? I think it's neat. I think it's really cool that they kind of like took a little twist and kind of broke the mold as far as what we're tr- what we're used to seeing, yeah. right? Yeah. I really appreciate that. I've, I appreciate the fact that they were ballsy enough to do it. Um, but man, I don't know what's going on with, and I understand this is a specific age group, but like. Man, the, some of these shows just suck, dude. And I know because I have a kid and I have to watch some of the stuff now. Like, <laughs> like, I just, man, there's not much competition. I guess Kung Fu Panda, Pause of Destiny, for me, that would be considered competition because I think it's it's voiced very well, and I feel like it's animated pretty well as well. So I I I, I think um, that's a fairly good competition. There's a lot of Disney on here, a lot more Disney than I. Th- a lot less Disney actually than I thought there would be, but mm. um, I've watched the Big Hero Six series. Not a fan. Ben Ten is it the new Ben Ten or is that yeah, like this is new? Yeah, that's the new man. I, gosh, I, the old Ben Ten was amazing. I have not watched the new one. The original, the OG Ben Ten was mm. amazing. So, but anyway. I know a lot of people this this show gets a lot of hate from a lot of older turtle fans like you and I not to say that we're old, but we were just, we've been a fan of the series since the very beginning. So I just, I hate to see it get all this hate because it's not, I'm not a fan. I want to, I want to make that very clear. This isn't a show that I, I, I will go out of my way to watch, but I think it's really, really cool what they're doing. And I'd like to see different things done like that with the turtles things that haven't been done in the past, things where people are willing to take a risk and try different things to see if if it works. I just want to see executed a little bit, a little bit better for our audience, our group of, I mean, this is a show meant for kids. Yes. This one more so I would say more so than the 2012 series. Uh, Considering how the 2012 series ended 100%. (laughs) (laughs) I'm yeah. not going to spoil anything for I don't know who's watched it or who hasn't. I guess at this point you should have. But if you haven't, I'm not going to ruin it for you. But damn, this is obvious. Yeah. That was that was meant for, I, I would say, probably like 15 plus. Yeah. Like it was it was it was pretty dark. Um, no, this show this show is is a much lighter take on the turtles. Yeah. Significantly lighter um, than than 2K12. And I'm not sure if, if they got specific feedback that said, you know what, we got we have to take a different a diff- take a different approach or if they're just targeting a specific audience to set themselves up for continuation, like maybe a new series in a couple years, another five or six years that's going to uh, kind of age with this generation that they're trying to attract and bring into the Turtle series. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, you you mentioned um, this series um, trying new things, right? And, yeah. and and you know trying to figure out what works for them. Um, so I think it's the episode that debuted today. Uh, we're recording this on Saturday the nineteenth. So I'm going to go ahead and play a a little a little song that was part of this episode. <laughs> And uh, and we'll talk about it afterwards. Let's see mm-hmm. if we can get this thing playing here. You know so much about all of us. So why do you keep saying you created the turtles? I'm glad you asked. We'll take it from here, boss. <coughs> he is the very 
model of a warring warrior scientist. He's mutated things from vegetable animal to cyclist. We want those little turtles to crush them with our iron fist. From Brooklyn to the Bowery, he'll grind them into nothingness. As a boss, he is extremely caring and at times quite passionate. Yet all they do is treat him as their classic villain antagonist. Our evil friends here today, he has some exciting news. Exciting news. Was 13 years ago today he made those turtles with the ooze? Was 13 years ago today he made those turtles with the ooze? Was 13 years ago today he made those turtles with the ooze? So I'm gonna pause it right there. So, so they're referring to Baron Draxum, which is, uh-huh. of course, that, that's the character that was from the very first episode. That's the character that is uh, um, voiced by John Cena. So he's, you know, he's the main baddie, right? And so. Uh, this song is now going to go into detail into how Baron Draxum created the TMNT in this, in this. So, okay, let's, let's keep playing. At the battle, Nexus Draxum found himself the perfect human fighter. He was the greatest champion. His abs were them tight. Mutating him was going to be nothing short of masterful. With warriors made from him, the Baron would be yo so powerful. Mutating him was going to be nothing short of masterful. With warriors made from him, the Baron would be yo so powerful. The turtle's rejection of him is nothing short of blasphemy. In several social circles, he's viewed as simply fabulous. Fine. I guess I'll give them what they want. After I gave them life, my lab was set on fire and destroyed by a cheesy action hero whose movies I don't enjoy. So I presume them lost and therefore I had all but given up. Only to discover weeks ago that they in fact had not burned up. Now that you know their origins, it's time for us to make a plan. And yes, we'll need the skills of everyone, including Anchor. And yes, we'll need the skills of everyone, including Anchor Man. Now my friends, the time is here, we mutants come together for a stand. Let's put a close on the first meeting of our merry little band. So join me in ending them, our greatest boss, for I insist. I am the very model of a warring warrior scientist. So join him in ending them, our greatest boss, for he insists. He is the very model of a warring warrior scientist. Now, for some unnecessary but highly destructive violence. My evil league of mutants! All right, so... First of all, John Cena, not not a terrible singer. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, no, let's talk about the <laughs> let's talk about the the important thing there. So, uh, Battle Nexus, throwback. Um, so that's that's cool. Yep. Um, and so he saw this fighter in the Battle Nexus, and he's like, uh, he's really good. Um, and apparently, he has chiseled abs. That's that's apparently a thing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing, babe. Nothing on the, the abs. No, 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 not related no. to you. No, she's not listening to me at all. No, um, she tuned you out for good reason. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, so, um, yeah, so apparently he's got chiseled abs. And so Baron Jackson's like, yeah, I want some of that. And so he, he takes them and he. Uh, I don't know, he sucks his DNA out or something, and he creates the TMNT uh, based on this guy who is like a, a movie action star. So um, there's some um, some thought that that this character would then be utilized, um, or I shouldn't say utilized, I should say that, that this character then mutates also into splinter. So, um, because this character has been like, he's like, there's like posters of him in the TMNT, like in their lab in their, in their sewer den and stuff like that. So, um, and, and so anyway, I don't know. Uh, but to kind of go off of what you're saying, I mean, they are taking some (laughs) risks. They're they're taking some risks. I mean, they are totally changing, the concept of the the turtles um origins here so um it doesn't get much uh much more extreme than that so um do you think that that's okay i mean it, it it's every series has to like they feel like that's their thing like they have to make it their own right i i don't i don't think we as fans i understand I don't think we should get hung up too much on it. Yeah. Look, if if the series fails, 
they're going to go and go back to old reliable and they're going to go back to the way it was. But with a, with a, with series with a, that's as well developed as this, you can take, you can afford to take risks and not have to worry about, you know, well, if this fails and we're done, that's not going to happen with the turtles. It's just not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Because the, you just make a new version. Right, you just make a new version. Cop, you don't uh, not copy and paste, but you you just literally make a new version. You maybe copy and paste from you know an older version, right? And then voila, done. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's a very good point. Um, so I will say um, two things. One, um, there's a <laughs> we have a link for Paul Shear and Jason Manzukis. Um, I guess from the show, the, the league, right? Yep. They're going to be making their appearance, uh, their first appearance on rise. Um, I have seen, um, multiple people, um, that, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would call them insiders, but I would just say that, uh, maybe have their, their finger on the pulse of, uh, of the TMNT, um, community. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have seen it multiple times that they do not expect this series to last past season two. Right. Um, what I would say, and 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 my beautiful wife sitting here uh, can back me up on this. Uh, the the you go to the the stores right now. The amount of turtle stuff in the in the toy aisle is ridiculous. Yep, and that's the whole point of this show. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of the show is to sell toys, and and it is ridiculous. How for for a a brand new active series where they they are supposedly selling stuff in stores. I mean, it's down to. I mean, what we saw we just saw at Walmart. It was like two pegs. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. And that was the case. It was not really... only now, because I mean, you're you're bound to see shelves full after Christmas because people are just shopping a lot less. But during Christmas, there was still a large amount of turtle stuff. Even here, when I went to Target or when I went to Walmart, as I was doing my Christmas shopping, you have to make a trip down down that aisle. Sure. And it was still pretty well stocked. Like, obviously, there was some pegs that were empty, but. It was still pretty well stocked, considering the time of year it was. So, um, right. so when we go to, when we went to Target, the area that we saw, and that was before Christmas. Yes, it was before Christmas, and the 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 area that they had for turtles was definitely stocked, but it was just really small. I mean, you go to back to the twenty twelve series, there was there was an entire aisle. <laughs> at Toys R Us of just turtles. The, it, it literally took up the entire aisle. Yep. And and now it's been squished down to basically uh, just oh yeah, by the way, the, there's there's the turtle stuff right there. It's it's the, that little tiny little area there that's squeezed in between the massive amount of WWE figures and you know well, Whatever. I mean, with turtle toys, Marvel. I, There's like a ton of Marvel stuff. Oh well, I mean, but turtle toys they're they're taking a back seat in like new turtle toys are taking a back seat anyway. You're seeing a resurgence of older toys, like older style toys, like your your the the set you 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 bought, for example, and they're more expensive. They're they're action figures. They're they're collectibles at this point. There, I, I feel like right now the bread and butter for the turtles is the collectible scene more so than the the uh, the big box scene, which is crazy because the big box scene is really where they're going to make their money. Yeah, but and it, well, and if that's the whole point of the show is to sell those toys, then something's not making sense here. So you know, the, so they're not connecting with their target audience, right? So that's what, they, that's essentially what it seems like. And that's, I mean, because you're going to make your money on, obviously, on the show and the ratings, but that's not where you're making your money. No. That's not where you're making your real money. No. You're making your money on every single toy that you're producing because they're, they cost pennies to the dollar 
to to manufacture and you're selling them for eight nine bucks a pop at least and that's i mean that's where you're making all of your cash they're not selling why aren't they selling and this is a conversation that they're obviously having yeah but what are they finding what what what, what kind of things are they finding I, I i don't even know i mean look the show i think is actually is well animated I'm not a huge fan of the style of the animation, but I yeah. think it's well animated. Yeah. So I think it's it's in it's it's fast moving. It's very colorful. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So you would think that that model would attract kids. Here's what's different, though, aside from just obviously the story. It's the type of animation. It's it's not CGI. That CGI look that t- the 2K12 series saw. That's what kids seem to be like. I mean. Eva's a perfect example. I know she's a, she's one and a half years old, but she will watch any sort of CG movie like Moana or mm. any Pixar movie over any old school Disney movie right now. Mm. It captures her attention more than than you know like she'll watch Moana over Mulan any mm. day of the week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, it, 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 without a question, she'll watch. Um, you know, freaking uh, Wreck It Ralph before she'll watch uh, Hercules, and it's just—I I don't know. It's—it's just—it's—it's it's a change. Kids are kids are looking for that now. Um, I think they're targeting. I think the, the animation style, as far as like the big moving parts, bright colors. I think there it's more for a. It's like those features are more for kids, Eva's age. As opposed to the target audience that I think they're trying to capture, which is probably that that you know five to 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 ten age gap, right? Right, or five to five to ten years old, roughly around yeah, there. I would say probably that's probably their target. Yeah, right. So five to ten years old, they're. I mean, at that point, they're looking. I, I feel like they're going to be more apt to look towards something that looks like the two K twelve series, like that two K twelve series. For me, I thought, okay, the the backgrounds and all that stuff looked kind of bland, but the actual turtles and all the villains looked great. And it was a little bit darker. And think of like all the all the Marvel movies, the DC movies, it's more of a darker feel. Sure. It's less bright, even I mean, this is basically Teen Titans Go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. Without the charm. Right. I, do, I just don't I don't think it has that charm and uh, I, I the voice acting isn't great for it either I think that's the, one of the drawbacks I'm not a huge fan of the voices being used for the well not not all across the board but I just I don't know man well the big difference too is that all of the voice actors aren't voice actors they're all actors right so this isn't really their their forte whereas um you had on the 2012 series, obviously, Rob Paulson, um, mm. uh, Greg Sipes, the voice actor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Sean Astin um, is a screen actor, yeah. um, and and I think this that may have been his first real, like, kind of big voiceover, um, not voiceover, voice acting role. But, um, and of course, Leo was Jason Biggs. And then transitioned out, um, and um, uh, help me, uh, Seth Green. Seth Green, thank you. Uh, yeah. obviously a huge history in voiceover. So um, huge history, yeah. yeah. And I, I preferred, but here's the interesting part about that. So I, aside from the only thing I didn't like about that was the way they decided to change his voice. <laughs> that was stupid. But <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they were kind of forced that's... to do it. They had to do something, and I, well, I, I think considering they, the situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I was, I'm, cur- I was curious about the whole Sean Astin thing, and as far as, um, as far as voice roles, and I'm just looking through it. Um, I, I don't, I don't see where he really had anything of of note. Like he's done some other stuff, but. Um, yeah, I think this was the only like reoccurring, like big role that he had as far as a voice actor, and I think I mean he knocked it out the park, like, uh, like killed it. Unless you, he did a great job. Yeah. Unless you consider Alvin and the Chipmunks the squeakle, 
as (laughs) (laughs) which you know was you know it in that of in itself a great movie but (laughs) that had to have been after no that was 2009 that was 2009 oh 2009 he was a meerkat in that well (laughs) he ran from sam white basically so so he he was he did that movie (laughs) Um, and Hollywood was like, oh my gosh, that meerkat, who, who, whose golden pipes voiced that meerkat? Oh, it's Sean, it's Sean Astin. Oh my <laughs> God. We got to get him as Raphael. That's essentially what happened. That's, <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. That was, that was it. His, his role as meerkat manor. Uh, oh, he was, the, he was, I'm sorry. He was the meerkat manor narrator. The narrator. So, I don't know what that means. I never really watched the movie, so <laughs> I, I, I'm, so, okay. I don't know what Meerkat. So my, is. my theory has been, has been. Nope, nope. He was still voice acting, and it could have very well been a Meerkat. It, it's the Chipmunks movie, so we're gonna go with and say that it's that it, it was a Meerkat. All right. So to all of our our listeners out there um, who have a uh, thorough, in depth background knowledge of uh, all things Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, please let us know. Uh, <laughs> Turtle Power Podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, let's uh, you know we're talking about some of the collecting stuff. Let's get on to uh, some collecting news proper. From Playmates. Uh, one thing that's that's kind of cool. I'm going to look into this um, because uh, we we've got a, another little one on the way, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, so this this stuff's a little bit um, for p- kids that are a little older, though I would say so. Uh, but they have some boys and girls clothes over at J Crew. Uh, they have a new uh, TMNT uh, capsule edition or capsule collection. Uh-huh. They're calling it, which is interesting because this is a new line. But all their and for kids, this is definitely for children. But of course, unfortunately, yeah, right. Oh. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Guess which version of the turtles they're using. Well, I don't know. Let's think about this. So, which which version of the turtles is always on everything? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Nineteen eighty-seven. Uh, and and that maybe maybe that's a sign of you know uh, maybe maybe that's what the Nickelodeon is talking about. <laughs> like what you know? I I I I, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, Beating a dead horse at this point. Um, so uh, let's let's move on. Um, let's talk about some NECA stuff. Um, we actually. You didn't, what? Call, you, I don't you know. Didn't even, you didn't even like. Okay, can we at least go over the designs for a minute? Like you. Okay. You, All right. You let's brush it off. Yeah, like, I know. Uh, I'm just. It's so what, weird. It's so weird. Why? It's not weird. It's not weird. Look, so our it was kids... the idea that like the parents of the kids are like, oh, I love Ninja Turtles when I was a kid, so I'm gonna dress you in the clothes that I okay. wore as so a you kid, can, except you way more get, expensive. You can get Rise of the TMNT like clothes if you will go to like Target or if you go to Walmart, but like these these companies like J Crew and stuff like that, they're profiting off of vintage, and they are going to. They're going to focus on. First of all, let me just tell you the one that looks like this, like like a cell drawing of uh, of Raph and and Donnie. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's a that's a sweet shirt, dude. Like that's that's a badass shirt. That is a, that is I a like shirt. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cheap. Pretty cheap. It, I mean, yeah, relatively inexpensive. I mean, there's some expensive stuff on here that I just wouldn't spend for a kid, like the the button down shirt for thirty seven dollars for right. a kid who's going to grow out of it in two in two days is is not something that I think is is cost effective. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, like ten bucks for a shirt, that's fine because um, you get sixty percent, you know, an extra sixty percent off if you use the code. Go for it. Very, very go for it. Go for it. Um, but I think I think I, they're going to – like I would buy that. I would buy that for, for my kid 100%. I would buy that for me if they made an adult oh, yeah. size. <laughs> Definitely. But I'd buy, that, I'd buy that for Eva. I, I would buy that for Eva work. 100% without thinking about it um, because I think – I feel like for us, I don't know. Like when you – and maybe it's just because it's been just shoved down our throat so much with the 87 series on every single thing, every – 
everything. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's a lunchbox, if it's if it's you know a shirt, if it's whatever. It's going to be the eighty seven series on it. But honestly, when you think turtles, and maybe th- that's a reason why is because of just the product marketing. But I, I all I all I think of is the eighty seven series. I, I literally can't think of anything else when I think turtles. I mean, I think of the movies as far as like what my favorite series was or what my favorite movie was. But when I think of Turtles, the first thing that pops into my head isn't the 1990 movie, even though it's my favorite piece of turtle, uh, you know, uh, filmology. It's 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 I think 87 series every single time you say Turtles to me. First thing that pops into my head is 87 series. Yeah. I don't So why not? I mean, they're obviously having these conversations and they're having. Uh, they're they're taking surveys and they're they're trying to get uh, ideas and what to do and what's popular and people are going to say what if you ask anybody what their favorite series is as far as the turtle series on any form I see it happen all the time on all these Facebook forums that we're part of and people are like what are your, what's your favorite t- what's your favorite turtle series it's like it's like a good sixty to seventy percent that say the nineteen eighty seven series even still yeah and two K three still gets no love. Yeah, I, I I I think a lot of that is road, rose-colored glasses too. You know, like it's it's yeah. it's if, if people that say that haven't seen it since you know probably ninety three. Yeah, I mean, I I started rewatching it uh, a few months ago, um, and I, I popped the DVD in, and because um, you know they have those in DVD, that makes more sense. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that does make it, sense. Yeah. 2003 even kind of makes sense, you know. <laughs> right. Um, it still holds up for me because there's that, that, that nostalgia, but the the show, the actual storyline of the show is not good. The, the The show is, was, you can tell now as an adult, was 100% made to just pump out as many toys as possible. Right. It wasn't made for the story. It wasn't made for anything the animation. I mean, how many times we didn't even know what turtle was fighting sometimes. Right. So it's like <laughs> the, the show itself was really in all outside of just nostalgia. Wasn't a great show. Just, it just wasn't, that's an unpopular opinion, but it just wasn't the two K three series was a far superior show with far superior animation. And, is a lot less loved because it wasn't the original. Right. It had it been the had it been the original, I I don't know. I I, I feel like people would would love it significantly more because that would have been their first introduction to the right. turtles. Right. Right. It's that it's that whole thing of uh, you know this is my first introduction to the to the turtles and therefore that is my favorite because it was my first. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No, I totally totally get that. Um, but, uh, I guess the 2003 series, the 2012 series, both showed that you can do both. You can make a show that Mm -hmm. can sell toys and can also tell a good story. 2012 series did that for sure. 2K3 did not sell toys. Well, that's true. <laughs> I guess the idea was to do that, and it and it didn't really sell all that many toys. Yeah, that's just, that's that's but, true. That's but that's point. that's a and and there's there's that thing though. The two K three series didn't sell that many toys. Very similar to what Rise of the TMNT is doing now. Yeah. So and two K three was completely different and took a different turn. In a, in a couple different ways, it, it, it they themselves stepped out of the box. Yeah, from what people expected from a turtle series, because they expected an '87 series reboot, basically, and they got 2K3, and that got overlooked. Now the standard is two, the 2K12. Yeah, and they and people were expecting a similar style, and they get Rise of the TMNT. So. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is just cyclical, man. This is, and then we're just bound to get an amazing series next coming mm. up. Interesting. Yeah, you might be onto something there. Might be onto something there. All right. So, can we now move on to NECA? I suppose. Yeah. 
um, speaking of those NECA figures uh, that are coming uh, in February uh, to GameStop, uh, there is a, a re- so I meant we were talking about Sci Fi Wire earlier. Um, they have a, a really good um, article, blog post. It's not really, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very in depth um, interview with uh, the folks over at NECA and the entire um, work that went into making the 1990 film TMNT uh, action figures. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, there's some uh, some photos in there for not just the Turtles, but also the upcoming Foot Soldier um, from the 90 film and also the Shredder, uh, which I believe is the NECA Shredder, the 1990 film. Oh, it looks so good. Um, I think that's actually the NECA, like, the picture that NECA has for its, like, uh, online uh, accounts right now. So um, both of these, the Foot Soldier and the Shredder, I think are both scheduled to come out this year. So, um, God, they they both look look so good. I mean, (laughs) the Shredder looks a little cross-eyed on this uh, shot, but that just might just be, like, the lighting or something. (laughs) <laughs> but besides that, uh, like even like I don't know the costume and everything, it looks fantastic. So I mean, just the texture on yeah, the turtle, the texture, the, the chainmail on the uh, mm-hmm. on the helmet and the, uh, the shin guards. It, oh man, it's just so good. I mean, I just can you imagine having these toys when you were when you were nope. like uh, back in the day? Nope, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I really can't. Um. Uh, last thing here I wanted to mention. So, so this might be a sign of what we were just talking about when it comes to the current turtles. Um, so, so playmates toys has created a new thing called the TMNT, uh, sewer squad club. And it's, it's a membership thing. And you can get like a free membership and I don't even know what that does. Or you can pay $15. $15. Okay. Keep that cost in mind. Uh, this will include not only a full color membership certificate to be mailed to you and a printable membership card. Okay. That's, that's nothing. Uh, <laughs> members only offers and reward packages. Okay. That's also nothing. Uh, exclusive, highly collectible set of the four Rise of the TMNT figures. Uh, with the uh, added decoration on all of the... Uh, so I think that this is the set that they sold at Comic-Con. Yeah. Do you want to know why they're not buying these toys? And this is $15. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> look at them. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean... They look terrible. They look, they look like a cheap like Chinese or Japanese knockoff that you would get from like a vending machine in Japan... They look. I got. I got a Ninja Turtle from a vending machine in Japan. <laughs> and then, but it was the. It was a mini, uh, twenty twelve. So rat. I ordered. I ordered what I thought. Um, I got them off of eBay. There was like this, which was my mistake number one right there. But um, I ordered them forever ago, and I, th- I think you've seen them. But they were. They looked like super cheap. I knew they were going to be cheap. I knew they weren't like original. But I still wanted to get them because, you know, they were kind of cool and they would just be like a cool little set piece. And I paid I paid like it was like three dollars per figure. And there's just like a I don't know, like the wrong turtles holding the wrong weapon and they're and they're actually bonded. So you can't like you can't like take the weapons off. So the weapons are like glued on. So. <laughs> Raph will forever be holding a you know a, a bow, oh. and like Mike will be forever like it just it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't even make sense. Um, but they looked better than these do, and, wow. and I paid like, and, and they were just Chinese knockoffs. They were one hundred percent Chinese knockoffs. They had some sort of mold that they found or created, and just pressed a whole bunch and they just randomly they didn't care they were just whatever like oh this, just throw any one of our you know like any any weapon you want people are getting like you're getting they're getting it from china circuit so they're gonna think it's real so like you know just press it who cares 
and these look terrible, man. Like these, these don't look fun. They don't mm. look like I wouldn't want to play with these. Like these don't like their, their proportions are weird. And I mean, I know these are the actual turtle proportions. So, I mean, if you're comparing them to what the actual show looks like, I think they look fine, but I think that's the problem. Like there's just, yeah, they just don't, they look, I don't know, man. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to own these. And I've never, I've never said that about a turtle figure before. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever said like I bought $3, Chinese knockoffs, knowing that they're knockoffs, because I'm like, oh, just, they still kind of look kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and I wouldn't own actual, actual like turtle figures. Like, I, I, I just, yeah, like, I just can't do. It. And this is Playmates that's doing this. Yeah, this is Playmates doing this. Yeah. So yeah, for fifteen dollars, uh, you can get the entire, all four turtles. Um, the Comic Con exclusive ones. <laughs> um, so yeah, so check that Honestly, out if you're interested. I, I think the fifteen dollars, <laughs> I think the membership certificate and the printable card are worth more than the turtles. Wow. So there we go. Right, you heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here, folks, from the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, that's a uh, that's a sol- that's a hard pass, I believe, is the the current uh, vernacular. <laughs> to be used for that, uh, it's a hard pass from Alex. So. I mean, Donnie's got a drone, and they all have sh- are those shurikens. It's hard for me to see. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, they got shurikens, and Mike's got a mace, two maces. Yeah. Because why not? Yep. And I mean, Raft guys, Tonfas. Yeah. I mean, we not, remember when we were talking about how. Their weapons being all you know different, and how that yeah. was like a big deal. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, but I just, I don't know, man. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And and and, the, I mean, the weapon choices are still similar. I feel like okay, you can change some things. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit of a hypocrite for just a moment, and that's mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> I, I, I do like, I, and I'm, I'm going to stand by. I think, I think it's okay to change and I, uh, to try different things and origin and, and, and play with it a little bit, yeah, man. I don't know if maybe I just have like this weird attachment to their weapons. And I feel like, I feel like their, their weapons are part of their identity. It's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Their, their weapons speak to who they are as a character, their personality, who they are as a turtle or as a person, like, that speaks to who they are more so than color, because colors are just for, for for toys, like more so than anything else. I feel like their weapons say more about who they are than anything else. And I feel like that's one thing that I'm actually more emotionally attached to than, than you know, a different turtle being a leader mm. or – uh, you know, it just it, or just if they were just to all be red, like the colors go away or if they change the origin story or if Splinter's actually a meerkat now, you know, <laughs> I, I, that wouldn't bother me as much as the weapons being different. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's maybe it's just it, I might be the only one in that, but it's just that's that that's more weird to me than anything else. Well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I haven't watched much of this, uh, series as well. Um, I mean, we, I've talked about it. Do you plan I mean, on getting I, through the series? Um, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe I'll catch up on it at some point, but I, I really just don't have, um, you know, maybe that's also a side effect of, you know, baby life is, you know, you, you you adjust your priorities in your life and stuff gets shuffled around and this is not making the cut right now. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I will, but it's going to be like a binge because it's going to be kind of like a band aid, like just get it over with right. quickly. Yeah. Maybe when the season's over and I'll just kind of binge through them. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that, that there's a possibility there. Hey, you know what, Alex? Let's take a break right here because I have a feeling this show is going to go really long with the rest of our content that we've got to cover. So 
let's uh, let's pause here and we'll continue the rest of the show in let's say two weeks. So we'll uh, end for now. And the uh, the song of the show we're going to go out on is by The Mad Gear. This is from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Four: Turtles in Time. The Technodrome, Let's Kick Shell. That's a great track. We will talk to you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check us out on our official website, www.turtlepowerpodcast.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. You can follow me, Ryan, at Big Don Pat. Follow me, Alex, at A Rodriguez 2005. Follow me, Darby, at Darby T. Patton. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Turtle Power Podcast. Make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Turtle Power Podcast. And also share your feedback with us via old fashioned email, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe and listen on Stitcher. program is powered by Tascam. Tascam's mini studio creator US42 is your new personal production and online broadcast studio featuring a professional quality audio interface and a number of unique real-time effects. The mini studio creator delivers everything you need for your podcast or webcast. Find out more at Tascam.com, part of the Gibson family of brands.